Hey everybody, Marco here, and welcome to another Pencil Mark video. Today, I wanted to showcase some Heiawake puzzles in preparation for this upcoming contest. Through the month of December, you'll be able to find a new puzzle every day, almost every day, on Logic Masters India. It's They have daily puzzles here, and this one is called Heiawake Hike. And the puzzles are made by Sam Kappelman Lines. I wanted to showcase some, I guess, easier puzzles here, which have sort of easy deductions. If you're not very familiar with Heiwake, you might use be able to use these to learn. The puzzles here do, in the daily contests, are more... They're smaller and they sort of have some sort of combination of deductions or intermediate deductions, so you won't be able to learn everything for those here. But I'll certainly do my best to explain how you can sort of progress in Heiawake really smoothly. So basically, let's uh, do some sample puzzles here from Bachelor Seal. The idea here is that the grid is divided into rooms by lines. These rooms may contain a number, like here there's a two, or they may not contain a number, like here there's like an empty region here. If there's a number, you need to put that many shaded cells into the room. If there is no number, you can put as many shaded cells as you want. The idea here is that the shaded cells cannot be directly connected. So for example, in this two here, they have to be one apart. Or like, they have to touch diagonally. They can touch diagonally, by the way. And the unshaded cells, they form an orthogonally connected area. So for example, this is impossible here in the bottom left corner because we have this one unshaded cell and it's separated from the entire rest of the grid. The other rule is that unshaded cells cannot stretch across more than two rooms in a straight line. So for example, this here, this line of three unshaded cells is not allowed because it goes through walls here. That is basically all there is to the rules. It's sort of uh, a min-depth but rule set, but it allows for some really interesting geometry combinations that make for some really challenging puzzles. I really like this puzzle type, although I'm not the best at speed solving it. And yeah, I wanted to showcase this a little. Let me just refresh this puzzle to reset the timer here. And we're off. So here you can see a bunch of regions which which there's only one solution for, these twos. One, one thing to note here is that you cannot pass through this here. You cannot um, block this path off and then pass through here because you'd be passing through two walls. So this three here, you cannot place two shaded cells over here because you'd cr block yourself off similarly on the bottom side. So here you place those two shaded cells over on the right. Similarly, I can see for this two, you can't do that over here, so you'd place those cells here. That allows you to complete this two and this three. Unshade some cells to make sure everything connects properly. This cell is shaded here because of the double walls. If we shade this cell, the two down below has to go like this and that would create a separate area. So this is unshaded, making this shaded for because of the wall argument. And there we have this two, this goes out. If we shade this cell, we would have to pass through a one wide gap again here, which goes through two walls. So we should, so we do the pattern like this instead. As you can kind of see, it sort of has a very nice solving flow, which I really like about this genre. This cell gets shaded because of the wall argument here. And here for the four, which now can only occupy a two by four, 
it's got a zigzag to make sure everything is occupied. There's two options here, but if you zigzag this way, it'll sort of form a diagonal line that goes from the bottom of the grid to the top, which separates the grid into two. So like early on in the Heiawaki solve, you'll be doing a lot of small area things, but later on you might have to make these big grid deductions to make sure that everything still stays connected in the, yeah, for the big unshaded cell region. For this four, I could not place, you, you can't place shaded cells in let's say these four places because they would make you shade all of these because of something called checkerboard parity. So if you see a region that's like a three by three and it's got a four clue, then you have to un unshade these four cells and leave four out of five of these to be shaded. If you see a three in a two by three, it can also only zigzag one of two ways here, which means you unshade these two cells because they're always gonna be unshaded no matter what. There's another cross grid connection that happens here. If you shade, were to shade these two cells, you'd have to cross through one of these two gaps here but then you'd end up crossing over two walls again. So you do need to do this for connectivity, which gives you the four. That gives you this cell for the walls, the cell per, yeah, two wall thing. This two is in a two by two, this two is in a two by two, it sort of forms another zigzag. And you can sort of trace the path Again, from the top left, this cell here is connected to this cell. So you don't want to connect that to the border again, so you have to zigzag this way here. That should allow you to resolve the, um, the left side here. This too is unshaded because no matter which zigzag you do right next to it, it's going to unshade this. If you were to make the zigzag this way, it would push the shaded cell that you need for the two down here. So you can't do that. It's got to be unshaded this way. If you were to shade this, it would force both of these cells to be unshaded and that would make another bad connection happen. So this is how the top side re resolves. You sort of have another, um, I, guess, I guess it's like a hidden two by three, three clue, which is a combination of this, these leftovers from the two clue and this one clue at the bottom. A nice way to do Heiawake sorta when it comes to the distribution here is to sorta combine regions or Im imagine new regions so I can sort of apply the same thing for that we do for other two by threes. Because this is at the border, both all of these four cells will be unshaded no matter what. And because of the wall thing, that allows us to resolve the pattern. Here's sort of an interesting argument. We we had it or er, we had earlier said that we didn't want to connect the top bit. This is purely a PZ plus thing. It's not in Penpa, but you can use check sh shaded cell connection to click on these regions here. I do not want to connect this to the 
two at the bottom here. So how do we resolve this three? We can't put in, in this uh, little two by two on the left here, we cannot put two, two shaded cells because that would mean it would connect to the two at the bottom here, to the tun tunnels. So we actually have two shaded cells that need to go in this two by two on the, the right side of this region. This sort of combines with the two by three above to create this two by five zigzag, if you can see, which gives us a bunch more unshaded cells in these spots. And if you were to do the zigzag like this, this cell being unshaded would cause this cell to be shaded. This cell would have to be shaded because of the three clue, and we sort of end up with the same bad connection that we wanted to avoid. So we do indeed have this zigzag. Again, we unshade these because of the three by three four clue thing. And now for the three clue that's next to it, if we have the zigzag resolved this way, it blocks off two of the candidates which means the zigzag needs to resolve the other way. Now, if four, uh, if four out of our five, if this is unshaded, then we would end up with shaded cells here. Same thing if this is un unshaded here, we would end up with shaded cells blocking off this one bit there. There's a... a Two wall thing pointing down. Two wall thing pointing up. We have another zigzag here. N now that this cell is blocked, we have a two by four zigzag. It will resolve this way because we do not want it touching this. Here we still need four shaded cells and we have eight places we can put them. So this sort of resolves by a checkerboard parity again. We either have this option, which does not work because it creates an isolated area, or this option. The two above only has a few places where we can put the things. Same thing with the right, double wall. And now we're almost done. We just need a little bit more. This cell being unshaded would create a double wall, so we have to shade this cell. That gives us a few shaded cells here by same argument. This here now has a double wall from the top pointing down. Satisfy the two clue there. That gives us another potential zigzag here. We cannot shade this cell because that would connect to the zigzag at the bottom and create a lot line straight through the grid. So this cell is unshaded, this cell is shaded. Quick thing on the other side, this is shaded here because of the walls. We have this unshaded. This cell up top is shaded because the of the column. Oof, gee, we're almost done here. It's again, this these are sort of easy-ish deductions, but the grid is just very large. One thing here is actually kind of interesting. If we unshade this cell, it would force two shaded cells per the wall connection, which would create a separate area. So this cell is unshaded and these are shaded. We have to shade these per the wall connection thing which forces a few more up top. We have our hidden two by three here again, which resolves this way.
And just to check the shaded cells connection, this is a thing that which almost touches this wall, so these two cells will be unshaded for us, which makes that connect. We cannot have two shaded cells in the top three cells here, so they go into the bottom three cells, and there's only one way the rest resolves. So that is the Sayawake here. I'll speed through the second one a little bit more. Hopefully, um, I'll only explain the more complicated deductions here. Checkerboard parity here again. The, the four by two here in the middle, it's got another zigzag arg argument, basically. These cells on the outsides will be unshaded. And that gives us a checkerboard argument on the five. We need to do it this way here, otherwise it'll have an internal area. Zigzag patterns on the threes here. The zero is of course completely unshaded. The four in the two by four is a zigzag. This is now a three by three with a four clue. And it's on the side of the grid, so we cannot have a pattern like this. So we have to shade these. That gives us this, 2x3, that gives us this 2x3. Shade the cell on the other side of the 4. Again, 3x3 three three with a 4 clue, that's going to have those unshaded cells. Hmm. One thing here is that even if this zigzag resolves the other way, I mean, this way or that way. Because this region is almost closed, this will be unshaded. So this is going to cell is going to be unshaded either way. Oh yeah, um, this cell un is unshaded, which gives us this four, which gives us the other four. Three has to go this way. Two at the bottom is satisfied, two up top here is satisfied. The two and the one sort of form that hidden two by three. It can't zigzag this way, it has to zigzag the other way. Get this two, and that's that. Now this five in a four by four is now a four in a three by three, so we got a similar thing that we had on the left. The three zigzag is resolved. This cell has to be shaded because of walls. This region is almost closed, so we have to open it here. Yeah, the, the shaded cells form a diagonal from the bottom up to this cell here, so these are unshaded. Yep, just uh, opening a path here. This cell is shaded for, because of walls. This cell is going to be unshaded either way. If this the cell is shaded, this is sh unshaded. Same sort of thing with uh, the four, four clue in a three by three. As you can sort of see by me repeating the same phrases over and over again, a lot of being good at Heiawake is sort of seeing the same pattern happen over and over again and knowing what to do when you see the pattern. <laughs> oh yeah, um, walls resolve where the zigzag goes here. And that means if we shaded this cell, we would create, uh, we would split the, the unshaded cells in two, so this is unshaded. This is a hidden 2x4 zigzag, which has to go this way. This cell is shaded because of walls. This is now a 2x3 three, 3 clue. This is shaded because of the horizontal walls, which gives us the 5. Two out of these three cells are un unshaded. I um, unshaded this because if we shaded this, then we would only be able to place one shaded cell here. And I can also shade this because if I, we unshade this, then the only two candidates are up there. 
Same reason I can shade this. That means these all go unshaded. And that sort of cascades into all of this here. Again, just making deductions with, first of all, with connectivity, and second of all, with needing to do walls, I mean, needing to do shaded cells when it goes across to room borders. I say walls a lot, but I, I guess you can't really call it walls if um, you can just freely pass through them. This four, four cell over here is connected to the border. We can't shade this combination of cells because it would uh, wall it off. And we also can't shade this combination of cells because of the same thing. Only by shading these two cells on the right and letting it connect, yeah, can we make the connection. Same thing here with the zigzag. Because um, there's an unshaded cell on the left and the right, there's got to be a shaded cell in the middle of these. So these two are unshaded for the one. That resolves this. Left and right sides of this need to connect, and the other shaded cells are forced there. We got this shaded cell by the walls, and the other shaded cell sort of just followed suit. Walls disambiguated this at the bottom. Yeah, um, root boundaries from up top resolves this zigzag. S same thing here. Same thing here. And here too. So sometimes when you're at the end, it's all just about looking at how how will I be able to place shaded cells here so that the room borders rule is held intact? Early on, it is a lot about looking at just patterns with the rooms and the number clues and which rooms have a relatively big number clue in, in uh, relation to the size. Then it sort of moves on to keeping connectivity, just keeping all the unshaded cells connected while also yeah, keeping the shaded cells apart, not making a shaded cell line go through the grid. And then later on, it's a lot more about looking at those double walls. Third one, let's try to do this one faster here. Our border two by three gives us that easily. Here we actually end up with a zigzag that ends up forming because we need a shaded cell between uh, those two unshaded, those unshaded cell borders, which, uh, yeah, that resolves uh, the four. Three gets resolved here. These one clues in the one by ones are sort of gimmies here. We end up with a similar thing to the top where we have a zigzag that happens because unshaded cells on either side of a two wide thing are, yeah, they're both unshaded there. And we can just sort of use that here. Yeah, two by two twos on the border. This two by two in a corner only has one way to resolve. There's a five in a three by three. That is a gimme. That re also resolves this three. That resolves this three. This cell is shadable. Walls over here. These two cells have to be shaded next to the zero. These cells are shaded by um, walls, which makes this unshaded for connectivity.
I almost shaded these cells for connectivity reasons, but you can still sort of connect if you leave this unshaded, so I'm not sure there yet. Oh, actually, this cell up top here needs to be shaded, so the bottom and the top of the left side, those are two different things. So this needs to escape. This also needs to escape up top. Three zigzag is given at the bottom. The, the small one region here resolves this. We have our, we need two shaded cells here and doing it this way will split the unshaded cells in half. So we go like this. Walls from the left side, walls from the bottom. Yeah, walls from the left side again. The thing about this one clue here is it means we cannot pass through this up here. If we were to shade a cell in this spot, it meant it mean actually never mind, never mind. I, I thought there was still a cell missing here for the two, but it does contain both twos. This is another thing. Don't go too fast or you might be able you might forget how to count. <laughs> We cannot shade this cell because it would force this zigzag to happen, That's so that is unshaded. This cell is shaded from the walls going down. Shading this cell would cause a shaded cell connection between the left and the top here. That's unshaded. We can go down a bit more. And yeah, we get a shaded cell from here. For the two for the two two by two on the top right, shading it this way would cause another border connection here, so we gotta do it the other way. Ball connection if this region here connected by the top, so it connects by the bottom instead. We resolve the remaining num ones by just getting all the clues. The cell needs to be shaded from the top. That Now we can resolve the two by three. Now we can get the shaded cells for this two. Again, we have our hidden two by three on the right side here. We can't zigzag this way, so we zigzag the other way. That gives us the two below it as well. And now this cell is shaded by the wall argument, the same thing here. We have another um, sort of hidden two two by two here because of the walls on the left and right sides. This is a thing that uh, Bachelor Seal likes to do, sort of repeat the same idea multiple times throughout the same puzzle. So we have these unshaded. This means this here would separate the grid into two, so this is unshaded. We get a bunch more unshaded cells here. And that resolves the bottom area. Now just for this last bit, we have one more cell here that we can shade for the room borders argument. And now we have to shade one of these two cells or else it would do borders again. And one of these two cells or else it will do borders again. If we shade this cell, we'd be pushed to shade this cell, which does not work, so we have to shade this. And then we cannot shade a cell here because it'll split the board, so we go here. And that is the third Heiawake of the day. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you got something out of this for easier Heiawakes. Please check out the Logic Masters India Heiawake hike if you want some Heiawakes that are well, they'll, they'll be a little bit smaller and a little bit more challenging, and there will be one bite-size puzzle each day. Right now, there are four trials, each of these just being 
sort of a smaller puzzle to get you in the mood. And the real first puzzle will be on the 10th of December, this Saturday. Hope to see you there. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.